but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall have be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much he know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's the end of this.
deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings. You shall take refuge. His truth shall be a shield and buckle up. That is the end of the same scripture reading. And thanks be to Almighty God. This time.
but I still did not know how to let you go. You said you were tired and needed to rest. Oh, so there's nothing left for you to do in this world, and I must try to understand. It is the hardest words I have ever had to accept, but God took you home, for he knows what, was, what is best. My best friend, motivator, comforter, and their mother, Sona Adams, I love you with all my heart. Someday, we will meet again on until then, sleep on in peace. Then all of a sudden, I missed Sonia. Only seeing her on weekends and holidays. I suppose that is when she found love in Kingstown and began her life and family there. At that time, we met in Kingstown, where she was one of the vendors, as everyone would have known. There are a lot of vendors. And when we met, she would stop me and we would have maybe a little conversation, not too long. But at, at every time we met, she would say, but Jeff, how oh Marcel? Tell her hello for me, eh? Marcel being my, my mom. Some years later, Sonia began visiting the church that I attend, Miracle Tabernacle in Lodge Village. She always sat in the back. Always in the back. And with her very quiet demeanor, would soak in all that was going on in church. But as soon as the benediction was finished, Sonia turned out of the door and headed home. She was a very, very quiet and reserved lady. Recently, it was quite noticeable that her health was deteriorating. And whenever she visited, we would ensure that we encourage her and pray with her. In this journey of life, saints, we can only start as we are. For all have sinned. However, it is critical that we finish and we finish well. My hope and belief is that Sonia finished well. And from what we've heard from her daughter, it is hard yet comforting to hear such words coming from a dying soul. Man sees which is physical and tangible, but I know that our God sees the heart. So there is gone and will be missed by the congregation. May our soul rest in peace.
মনে রাখো relationship between a mother and her child is like none other. A mother has known you longer than anyone else in the world. And while your relationship may not always have been perfect, your connection runs deep. Dealing with a person is one of the hardest things that I will ever have to do. But thank everyone for coming see how great the legendary life of Sonia Adams. Well, Sonia Adams, sometimes known as Sonia Lewis, and in some places, some places thought young, was not my birth mother. She can be considered as such. Because she took me as one of her own from the age of four. I remember her vividly telling of the story of how I came to live with her. So they would always say she came to Bari one day and saw a child with a big head and a big belly, <laughs> but with a small body and asked me if I wanted to go and live with her in town. I naturally accepted her offer. She said, I will come back in two weeks for you. And that she did. She met me packed and waited. I am Freddie Harper by name. Miss Sonia Adams is my beloved aunt. Whom I respected so much on her life and achievement has brought me much inspiration in life. Standing here today to give this tribute in honor of her is a great privilege that I hold so dear. You know, there are many people who have made an impact in my life, but here on Sonia was exceptional. It took me from a lonely background and helped me to become the great man I am today. Your kindness and generosity are exceptional. A woman's life who already had eight children. Helen Lewis of Blessed Memory, also known as Duffy of Massive. Gemma Lewis, also known as Brunnevik. Winston Lewis, also known as Miss Boy. Marcia Lewis, also known as Jerry. Without Lewis also known as Rudy. Fitzgerald Lewis, also known as China. Corsella Adams, also known as Mickey. And Calvert Adams, also known as Tecky. Sonia was born on 24th of January 1948 from her experience in Maryland to her parents Milton Lewis and Louisa Adams. She left Barley at an early age in 1967. She started out as a domestic worker for various persons until her fingers started to go. In other words, she used to get with her finger. I don't know any of you know that. She turned to vending, selling mostly groundnuts and popcorn on the garden currently occupied by Jack's Enterprise. Our eldest son, Claire, helped her a lot by selling after school in the evening. Mm -hmm. She lived in several rent houses in various locations, from Coleman Joe's to Sandville to Kingston Park. Her selling skills and charm earned her the privilege of renting a shop from Grenville Mac, located in Middle Street, just opposite the old Ironman site, way, way, way before the current vegetable market. This is where she started making money as a vendor and a shop owner. 
shop to send us to school and it was profitable. This is how she was able to convince Mr. William Jackson of Blessed Memory in residential shops to rebuild his home in order to accommodate all of us. Except for Clement, who lived in Barley most of his life until his death. I remember the times in school, vacation, on vacation, when we were asked to ice cream, so when we were inside, for the book list, I said, this is the ice cream right there. <laughs> but, you know, she would treat us every now and then, we had a little something. Naturally, I did not go on our demands grew. So the wine shop was sustainable, she needed to do more. I decided to become a trafficker as well. She started selling brandy and cheap by cigarettes and mm -hmm. cartoons. This aspect of our life was not easy at all. Because if you try to sleep in overnight in Union Island, and sometimes they try to, and leaving us alone. But it was not easy. At the end of the day, she made friends with many people, especially Mary and company from Union Island. Earlier, I mentioned that Sonia Adams, also known as Sonia Lois, there's a reason for that. As a chapter back in all days, customs you process you by your surname. So when the custom comes and started as A, she was Adams. When they started from W, she was the Lois. <laughs> Just to make sure things go smooth and She often told us about journeys from Union Island and Caracol and the danger that it was us. Johnny Logan in small boats, missing lunches. Those stories made me study my books much harder. So that I wouldn't have to apply a trade like us. But for one thing though, I do respect those persons who do that sort of lifestyle. I do respect them. So they eventually got married to Messiah Victory, who passed on several years ago. With his help, and all spoken tears from her children, she was able to build a house in Ludwich and move up the shops. We, the children who were not working at the time, helped to build this house while she carried, carried on her life as a trafficker. One thing was she loved eating and, and she loved enjoying cooking. Though she was diagnosed with diabetes that did not stop her from eating whatever it is she liked. She would have drink a lot of water to compensate for the sweetness. And she walked a lot. She also loved to drink red wine, especially when she traveled. And she also loved going to weddings and enjoyed cuisine. And Sonia loved to travel. It was a walk and pleasure story. She went fabulous, Canada, USA, Cruise, England, Venezuela, St. Lucia, Grenada, and Caracol, just to name a few. Though she hardly carried, carried any of us with her, we understood because it was both walking and taking time to cool off. And enjoying herself. In a lot of days, her channels are mainly for relaxation. Yeah, um, we had fun times in that village. There was one time 
on fits. It was hiding the end back on and started throwing stones, causing Sony to think that the drum beat was throwing stones on while she was on the bike. After the tour of stone, Sony was shot down. You could throw as much stone as you want. Me not afraid of you. By the time fits reach for the next stone, so I never know where to be a set. <laughs> she had made her way in the house with very good speed. <laughs> also, there were times when I remember when I was hungry. I couldn't wait until the pot was finished. True, we never went inside. As we all know, know this kind of situation. We never went inside. And as soon as I popped the dump, I opened the pot in my mouth.
Thank you. Thank you for living a great and fulfilled life. Life without you to guide, coach, instruct, provide stability again will be quite challenging for some of us. Thank you very much for being the kind of woman you are. Your greatness challenged me to be all that I am today. You taught me patience, process, and hard work. Rest on, my dear hero. Rest on. You are gone, but you will be remembered in our heart forever. We love you. Troubled by death. 
And so Jesus understanding that they're not going to see him after a while. They're not going to see him anymore. He comforts their heart. And I pray that those who are family, those who are friends and loved ones and well wishers and you know Sonia well, that your hearts will be comforted. Jesus offers three sources of comfort. He promises reassurance. Let not your heart be troubled. Hearts are troubled, but if you don't know where you're going, hearts are troubled. If you don't know what awaits you, hearts are troubled. And going through your daily life, you don't think about heaven and hell, and you don't think about fire and brimstone, where the fire is not quenched, and where the worms don't die. When someone dies, or when you begin to approach them, you begin to wonder, wonder where I'm going. Your hearts are troubled. Jesus does not warn at this juncture of our earthly experience death because our earthly experience is a composite of life and the death. He doesn't warn when we come when we come when we come to this necessary point of our earthly existence death that our hearts are troubled. Let not therefore family and friends your heart be troubled. He says this because he knows I've got this. I've got this thing that troubles you most. I have got it. I have it. In the scripture that Paul said of herself, read, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 50 to 50, and she said, it. it is not something to be troubled about because what Jesus accomplished is that he has done something so that perishable transitions to imperishable. He has done something so that mortal, mortal goes to a better place, immortality. He is saying this is good. He is saying death is good. In fact, in that passage, it goes on to say, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? In the past where death was uncertainty and defeat, what he is saying in this juncture, what he is saying is that death is your victory. We ought not to be troubled, therefore, from the perspective of Jesus and from the perspective of the Bible, we ought not to be troubled by death it is what he says, let not your heart be troubled. That is your victory. That is the moment when perishable takes on imperishable. When mortal transitions to immortality, that's what happens when you die. It's a good thing. So he reassures us about death. And then the second thing that he does to comfort us, the second thing that he does to comfort us is not only that he promises reassurance, but he prepares a residence. He says, I go, I myself, me, I am going and I will prepare a place for you. He goes on to say that he will come again and receive us unto himself. He promises us, he promises us a place. As he is going to prepare a place, and sometimes we have this tendency to think of the place as our cabin in glory land, and that is useful to think of it like that. And when he says, I go to prepare a place, it is sometimes we think um, of our mansion, build me a mansion in heaven. It is useful for us to think that the place that Jesus has prepared is this kind of cabin in glory land, mansion in heaven and all of that. But when he talks about the place he provides for us is that his work, he says, I am going, I am going, I must go, I must die. I have to prepare this place of heavenly rest for you. And it is done through my work on the cross and my dying and my sacrifice in giving my life for you, I will prepare a place with my Father in my Father for you. 
We do not have a place in God except for the work of Jesus Christ. And I know that you didn't come here to get theology, but I want everyone to know when Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, he says, I have a work to do with my Father. Right now you are destined for hell, and I have to eat out a place of forgiveness and grace and mercy for you. I am preparing that place. He assures us that through his life and through his death and resurrection, that we have a place in God. But beyond that, there is another place. That because we first of all have this place in God, because we first of all have this place in God, now we have access to another place, a place of beauty. Described in Revelation 21, verse 8, all the way up to Revelation 22 and verse 5. It's a place of continual worship. It's a place where there is a rest from pain and toil. In her last days, the pneumonia had so wrapped her body. Throughout her life, as Brother Pastor Priest recounted and Brother Harper, Recounted, there was so much toil. And during her earthly sojourn, there was so much care. And now, Jesus, to prepare a place in God for her, she is now able to inherit a place that is free from pain and toil and care where she can rejoice. Or the Reeves used to sing, I wonder he sang, like, This world is not my home. I'm not the passing through. I'm just passing through. Let not your hearts be troubled. A word of reassurance. I go to prepare a place for you. A word about our residence and our belongingness in God. That no man can be left out. And no woman can be left out. If we want that place, we can have it. He is prepared it for us. As your second word of comfort. And finally, the last word of comfort as I hear, as the disciples, I put myself in their spot. Jesus is about to go. And he offers them reassurance. He says, I got this. That is victory. And then he says, There is a place for you. And they begin to imagine what that place is. And maybe in their hearts, now watch this. Maybe in their hearts they're now beginning to want this. Maybe in their hearts they are beginning to be reassured. Maybe in their hearts they are beginning to be comforted. Maybe in their hearts they're beginning to say, I could let him go. But there is a part of them that says, But I want to go there too. I want to go there too. And Thomas voices the question. That perhaps we all ask, how are we going to get there? You know the way, but tell us, we want it, we want this, we like it, we can accept your going. Death, though it is hard to accept, we can embrace it, we can allow it, we can live with it. If you prepare this place and can take us there, we want it, how do we get there? How do we get there? And so he not only promises reassurance and prepares a resident, but he provides a route. He tells us route, route. He tells us how to get there. And in verse 6 he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man makes it in. No man comes to my father accepts he comes through me. I would like for everyone listening to, uh, to under the sound of my voice to be assured that you also will be going where the dear sister has gone through her faith, not through her deeds, not through her deeds, not through her deeds, through her faith. In the salvation work of Jesus Christ, she has a place in heaven. How many 
if you can say with bold assurance, I, if I were to drop dead now, I'm going to heaven. How many of you can say with bold assurance, if I were to drop dead now, I know where I am going. Jesus wanted the disciples to know for sure where they were going. And he explains how to get there. Please listen, this is important. This is life changing for you. The way into that place that Jesus talks about, heavenly rest in God, reconciliation with God, peace with God, and a home in heaven, the way to get that in the afterlife, it is not through religion. Your church cannot save you. Some of you say, I am SDA. Some of you say, I am Baptist. Some of you say, I am Catholic. Some of you say, I am Methodist. Some of you say, I am Anglican. Some of you say, I am Grace and Truth. Church and religion can't save you. You could be church member all of your life. That's not how you get to the place. Good works can't save you. It's not about your philosophy and how much you've given throughout life and how good you have been. And you know some hypocrite Christian who was the new and all of that and you better than them. Good works can't save you. Self-righteousness because you have been so good. You've never been in jail. jail. You, never, you never went cinema. You never drink rum. You never drink beer. You never party. You never sleep out. You never do this. You never do that. That can't save you somebody. Can't save you. That's not the way. You will be self-righteous your whole life and still get left out. It is not true religion and good works and self-righteousness. And it is not true possessions. Many of you who had a whole lot more than Sonia. But she knows where she is going. Jesus says there's only one way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can't, you can't come to the Father except through me. He has therefore made a way possible for everyone. And this is the way. His life of sacrifice paved the way. His appeal on the cross, Father, forgive them. It was not only for those who were mocking and nailing him to the cross and all of that. It was not only for the thief on his right and his left. It was for all, it was for all of us. Forgive them. They don't even know forgive them. This is the appeal of the very Son of God dying and in dying he is asking his daddy, God forgive them. Please forgive them. There is forgiveness available because Jesus begged for it for us. Grace and mercy are the rock stones that they come over. It is a pitch that is paving all of these things provide the highway into heaven. It's mercy and compassion. Jesus wants every one of us in heaven. And because he wants every one of us in heaven. He lays down his life so that that life can become the highway by which we walk across Jesus to eternal life. And so in Isaiah chapter 53, 5 to 7, it says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us, our peace was upon him and by his stripes. We are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Everyone to his own purpose and God laid on him the iniquity of us all. God punished him. He has been punished. He has died. But in doing so, he has made a way. I don't know in closing. I don't know if for sure you can say if my last breath is taken right now is heaven. I God just so. But in case there is somebody here who has not made a calling and election show. While those who mourn are receiving reassurance. And those who already know him are promised a resident. There are some of you who need to find this route to Jesus. To God. To Jesus. And the thing is. It is 
not hard. The thing is, he makes it so easy and he said, all you have to do is go through the door that I open. You ask, how do we go through this door? How do we find this way? It is easy. It is found through confession. Say, Lord, I have sinned and I have lived a life and there is sin in my life and I have fallen short. It's as easy as that. How hard it is to say, I confess. How hard it is to say, Lord, I come to you in confession. I have fallen, I have sinned. Confession helps you to find the way. But there's a second thing. Repentance. Repentance helps you to find the way. Not only do you confess, but you say, I turn. I turn from the things that I am doing, the mindset of I have, the lifestyle of sin. I'm going to lay that aside and I'm going to turn from that towards you. That's not hard, that's easy. The way to God, the way to this place, the way to the reassurance, and the way to the residence that He has provided, it is easy if you would say, I confess, Lord, I confess. And Lord, I repent. And then you ask for forgiveness. And you have found your way. There's an old song that says, Will the circle be unbroken? Bye, 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 bye. I tell you what. It is in your hands to determine, to determine that. If you determine today that you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, if you want to go this way in which He provides, you will be reunited with your loved one and your friends and those of God on before. But if you choose not to, then there's another place that he talks about. It is appointed unto a man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that you have been sent to us to deliver today. For words of comfort. The promise of reassurance. The provision of the, the preparation of a residence and the provision of a way to get there through. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will now convict hearts at this time. People who do not know you as Lord and Savior, to take this occasion to invite you into their lives. And if there be any care, and you don't know for sure where you're going, and you don't know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you want it, it's as simple as this. If you bow your head and say after me, if you bow your head, please bow your head. This has happened many times at many funerals where people give their lives to the Lord. It can happen now for you. Bow your head and say after me. Lord, I confess that I have sinned. I have done things that are wrong in your sight. I am under the curse of the original sin. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. Just ask God to forgive you. To cleanse you through the blood of His Son. Cleanse me through the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. These next few words are very important. God, it is my desire to make your son, Jesus Christ, my Lord. God, it is my desire to make your son, Jesus Christ, my Lord. And to live in a way that honors and pleases him. Thank you now, Lord, for writing my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life, never to be removed. To Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you said that simple prayer, although it was a repeating of what I said, if you said that simple prayer, God is faithful and just. He will honor that. You have just given your life to the Lord. Please do like others before you and other funerals have done. Be sure you tell someone. It has happened just the very last funeral I did. Very last funeral I did. Somebody there, listen, said the prayer just like you and receive Jesus Christ. Be sure before this day is finished, tell someone at the funeral, I said the prayer. If you link up with me as I'm going out or you catch up with me at some point, tell me if you get the chance that you said the prayer. 
If you know of a pastor in your village or wherever you're from, tell him I went to a funeral and I said a prayer asking Jesus Christ into my life. And we will be able to take it from there. Do not let this day pass without telling someone that I said a prayer at the funeral. It could be the very best tribute to the life of uh, Sonia that you would have done. That you, on the occasion of our going home service, said a prayer to ask Jesus Christ into your life. I'm going to ask the family now. Uh, I leave you with some powerful words from Jesus. Jesus is speaking on the occasion of the death of Mary, uh, the brother of Mary and Martha. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be. Bless you. God keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. And grant you his peace. Now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah, I, 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 I